What's up, guys? Not every quarterback can be like Tom Brady or Ben Roethlisberger, where they step into the spotlight and they succeed right away. In fact, many of the greater quarterbacks, past and present, struggled for a few years before they finally morphed into the superstars we all know and love today. I'm Jason Biondo, and today we present 10 quarterbacks who look like busts, but then became stars. And don't forget to subscribe to Total Pro Sports because we post videos every single day. Every day is a new video, so you gotta go hit that subscribe button right now. Great content all the time. Go do it. And a big shout out to Grain Stickin for suggesting this video. Number 10, Jake Plummer. The Arizona Cardinals drafted Plummer in the second round in 1997, and he'd spend six years with the organization, but Plummer was never a fit there. And it's amazing that the Cardinals stayed patient with him for so long. Plummer went 30 and 52 as their starter and compiled 90 touchdowns versus a terrible 114 interceptions. Sure enough, a move to Mike Shanahan's Denver Broncos finally brought out the best of Plummer. Plummer led the team to the playoffs in 2003, 2004, and 2005. He was named to the Pro Bowl in 2005 after leading the Broncos to the AFC Championship game. Also, fun fact, Plummer handed Tom Brady his first ever playoff loss in the divisional round. It's pretty impressive. He went 39 and 15 as Denver's starter. All winning seasons. That's how you go from a bust to a star player. Number nine, Chris Chandler. Drafted in the third round by the Indianapolis Colts in 1998, Chris Chandler lost the faith of his coaches after just two years. Indy drafted Jeff George two years later, and Chandler was traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chandler didn't win a single start in Tampa and was cut after a terrible showing. He went from the Cardinals to the Rams to the Oilers. Same results. He just wasn't good at all. Chandler was traded to the Atlanta Falcons after the the 1996 season and he finally pieced it together under head coach Dan Reeves. Chandler was named to the Pro Bowl in 97 and 98. He led the Atlanta Falcons to Super Bowl 33, their first appearance ever in the Super Bowl. They lost to the Denver Broncos, but Chandler brought some success to the long-suffering franchise. From ultra bust to journeyman backup to a Super Bowl starter, that's an insane comeback story for Chandler. Number eight, Vinny Testaverde. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers drafted Testaverde with the very first pick in 1987, but he could never get a going with them. In six years, Testaverde compiled an awful 24 wins and 48 losses. He compiled 77 touchdowns and a whopping 112 interceptions. Testaverde finally left Tampa and joined the Cleveland Browns in 93, leading them to a postseason berth and a wildcard round victory the following year. The Browns moved to Baltimore, and Testaverde was named his first Pro Bowl in 96 after throwing 4,177 yards and 33 touchdowns. It's crazy. He was also a Pro Bowl selection for the New York Jets in 98, leading them to the AFC Championship against the Denver Broncos, which they lost. Testaverde finished with 275 touchdowns and 46,233 career passing yards. Considering how much he flopped in Tampa, that was a pretty big turnaround. Number seven, Rich Gannon. The New England Patriots drafted Gannon 98th overall in the 87 draft when he refused to play running back. They traded him to the Minnesota Vikings. Gannon played for the Vikings until the 92 season. Stops in Washington and Kansas City did nothing to help him out, and Gannon looked destined to be just another draft bust. That all changed when the Raiders signed Gannon in 1998, where he teamed up with the offensive mastermind head coach, John Gruden. Gannon was named to four straight Pro Bowls, and won the 2002 MVP award. That same season, his Raiders reached Super Bowl 37, which turned out to be an ugly 48-21 loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That sucks. Still, Gannon breathed new life into the struggling Raiders and played at an elite level for like four years. See kids, you can be a late bloomer and still succeed in life, just like Gannon. Never give up hope. Quote that, Jason Biondo, never give up hope. Number six, Steve McNair. The Houston Oilers drafted McNair third overall in 95, but he had to wait a while to see playing time. McNair backed up Chris Chandler and saw little action in his rookie year, then struggled in his nine appearances during the 96 season. McNair then began turning a corner in 97 when the franchise moved to Tennessee. He led the Titans to a Super Bowl 34 appearance where they lost to the St. Louis Rams. He was selected to three Pro Bowls and was co-MVP in 2003, sharing the title with Peyton Manning. McNair turned the Titans into an AFC heavyweight for several years. He finished with 174 touchdowns and 31,304 career passing yards. So yeah, it all turned out fine after like two unproductive seasons. Number five, Jim Plunkett. The New England Patriots drafted Plunkett first overall in 1971, and the former Heisman Trophy winner had Superstar written all over him. Plunkett spent five years with New England, but posted a terrible 23 and 38 record, tossing a total of 62 touchdowns against 87 picks. The dude was a bust. The Patriots gave up and traded him to the 49ers, where he also flopped. Plunkett would join the Los Angeles slash Oakland Raiders, and it turned out to be a massive career changer. He won the NFL Comeback Player of the Year award in 1980, 
Brady and led the Raiders to two Super Bowl championships. He is one of the best players that's not enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Maybe being a bust for six years hurt him, but Plunkett got the best laugh with two championships as a Raider. Two. I'd be laughing my ass off. Number four, Alex Smith. The San Francisco 49ers drafted Smith with the first overall pick in 2005, hoping he would be the next great franchise QB. But Smith was terrible in his first five years. Failing to lead San Fran to a single winning season, he was a turnover machine and hadn't tossed more than 18 touchdowns in one season. Then suddenly everything changed when the 49ers hired Jim Harbaugh. Smith turned his career around and guided San Fran to the NFC Championship game and an overtime loss to the Giants. Smith was traded to the Kansas City Chiefs in 2013. In five years there, Smith was named to three Pro Bowls and led them to four playoff appearances. He's now the quarterback for the Washington Redskins and looks to have several more quality years left in him, even though that injury did kind of really hurt him. Uh, it took six years, but Smith finally got his career going and thus avoided the bust label. But like, hopefully this recent injury he just had doesn't damage him forever. Number three, Fran Tarkenton. The Vikings legend was drafted in the third round, 29th overall in the 1961 draft. But Tarkenton's first years in the NFL led left a lot to be desired, and Minnesota fans certainly couldn't have imagined that he would grow into a superstar. Tarkenton won just four games through his first two seasons, throwing a whopping 42 interceptions over that span. But Tarkenton finally turned a corner and was named to the Pro Bowl in 1964, leading Minnie to an 8-5-1 record. He'd lead Minnesota to a trio of Super Bowl appearances in the 70s, but they lost all of them. Tarkenton won the 1975 MVP award and finished with 342 career touchdown passes. He is now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I mean, who would have thought that after such a bad start, he ends up in the Hall of Fame? Go for you, Tarkenton. Number two, Warren Moon. The Washington product shined for Edmonton CFL team, leading them to five Grey Cup championships and winning the 1983 Most Outstanding Player Award. Moon decided to make the jump to the NFL, joining the Houston Oilers in 1984. His first three seasons were brutal. He tossed double-digit interceptions every year, including 26 in the 1986 season alone. Moon finally turned it around and was named to the Pro Bowl in 88, tossing 17 touchdowns against just eight picks. Moon wound up being named to nine Pro Bowls while also leading his team to seven playoff appearances. And yes, he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. From ultimate bust to a place in Canton. See, it just takes time for some people, guys. It's possible. Number one, Steve Young. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers took Steve Young first overall in the 1984 supplemental draft, where teams got to draft stars from the USFL and the CFL. Young spent two seasons in Tampa, posting an awful 3-16 record with 11 touchdowns and 21 interceptions. But the San Francisco 49ers saw something in him, so they surrendered second and fourth round picks to Tampa Bay in exchange for the left-handed QB. I have a feeling that was a good deal. Young watched Joe Montana win two Super Bowls from the sidelines, but injuries forced Montana to miss all of 1991 and all but one game in 1992. Young established himself as the starter in San Fran, so Montana was traded to the Kansas City Chiefs in 1993. Young would guide San Francisco to another Super Bowl as the starter. He won two MVP awards and led the NFL in passing touchdowns four times. Four times. And yes, he's also in the Hall of Fame. Not bad for a guy who was a complete flop in Tampa. And credit to the 49ers for recognizing his talents. He kept the dynasty going. Guy's a legend. And that's why he's number one. What other quarterbacks look like busts before turning into stars? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, go follow myself and Total Pro Sports on social media. We post great content all the time. Funny tweets, good Instagrams, um, good content that makes you laugh and smile. So why, who, who wouldn't want to smile? Go follow us. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click, and we really appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. Do you know what else takes one click? Subscribing. So subscribe as well. We post videos every single day. Every day's a new video. Why wouldn't you do it? Of course, thanks so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo, and I'll see you later. My knee.